You, you aspire to rearrange the transfer function to look like this, and I made another mistake because I forgot to write s there. What a loser. Okay, s it's somehow disappeared. Okay, right, so I, I see this, I know I want to make it look like this, and it's easy to do for this case. It's a little bit of algebra, but you get this, okay? So that says, ah, now I can use the formula in the book, and I know what my tau 3 is, my tau 1, and my tau 2 is, right? Minus 1 half, 1, 1 half. Now I just plug into the formula given in the text, in table 3.1 for that particular case. Um, I won't bore you with the details. Right? But you're going to get a 1 term that comes from the S that's not written there. You're going to get an E to the minus T term from this, and you're going to get an E to the minus 1 half T, also known as E to the minus 2 T from this term. And those are the coefficients right out of the table. Simplify, you get that. Okay? All right. So then I ask you, plot this response. Okay? Here's the kind of thing I said, when I mean pl qualitatively plot the response, I mean something like this. Um, plot y versus t, no surprise there. And what am I looking for here? I'm not looking for an exact plot of this equation, although if you give it to me, it's fine. First thing I want you to do is represent it goes in the opposite direction, right? That's the inverse response. That is coming from this s minus 2 thing that appeared in the original transfer function. So I want you to recognize when you plot this that you're going to get an inverse response. That's the whole point of the whole problem, actually, in a way. All right? Sorry, my leg itches. And then you can just tell me where it ends up going. It's right when these t term, when t gets large, it goes to one. So the only thing I really cared about here was that you showed that it initially went in the wrong direction and it ultimately went to one. I don't care about the time scale, you know, like when it crosses this or anything like that. All right, looks good. Okay, so what have I done now? Okay, cascade control problem. Let's read the problem statement. Okay, so I'm telling you I have a cascade controller here. Okay, and let's see. So I have, first of all, I have, you, you might recall, I'll show you in a minute. I'm gonna, I have a controller where I want to use reflux flow to control the composition of the overhead stream. Okay. DC means distillation comp. So I'm trying to control the overhead product composition by regulating the <coughs> reflux, but the controller doesn't send a signal directly to the valve that controls the reflux. It sends it to a flow controller that controls the reflux, as usual. That's how you normally do it, right? So it's something that looks like this. Okay? So this is just part of the column. <laughs> just chopped it off, okay? So overhead comes here, right, I condense it, it goes into the drum. Um, <coughs> this is not really what I'm focusing on here, but anyway, um, it's driven, it's drawn for completeness, but all right, so what do we want to do here? This is the reflux. We have a flow controller that controls the actual reflux flow, and the composition controller determines the set point. So it's a composition of flow cascade, okay? So Again, you don't have to have done the previous part to know this is what I'm asking you, because I tell you in the problem statement, just assume somehow in the first part you came up with this. It suggests you should have come up with this to begin with, but you didn't need to. And I won't ask you that anyway, so let's just start with this. This is not germane, I just wrote it for completeness. We're talking about this cascade here. Um, so, let, let's see what other, I must have given you more information on this. All right, so the first thing I said is draw, draw a picture of this, which I just showed you, and then I said convert this picture into a, into a block diagram, which I'll show you in a moment, okay? Then we're going to do two designs. Remember, the, the idea of cascade control is first of all you design that inner controller, that'll be the flow controller, and then you design the outer controller, which is the composition controller. So I'm just asking you to do these things um, in, in this order, because the design of this controller depends on the design of this controller, okay? All right, and then I'm telling you, this is the transfer function. I'm giving you the transfer function between the position of the valve, which is the input for the fl flow controller, and then the actual flow, okay? It's this particular transfer function here. 
Um, and then later I'm going to tell you that this is the transfer function between the output here. God. No, sorry. Everything's fine. Um, okay, so Y2 here is defined to be is the reflex flow rate from here. And so I'm telling you, this is the transfer function between the reflux flow rate and the actual composition. So the idea is you're supposed to design this controller first, then you design this one. So let's see how that works. Okay, so this was part one, right? I already asked you this. You didn't need to draw this part over here. I just drew it because I couldn't help myself. The, the way you had to dr draw was this part here. Right? This is not that hard. You, you have composition, you're controlling this by cascading it to a flow control that controls the reflux. Okay? Then you've got to convert this into a, a, a block diagram. Well, this looks like any other cascade block diagram. <laughs> it's no different. I haven't, th I haven't shown the disturbances that I often show up here. But what do we have? Well, we have an inner loop. We measure the actual flow. We compare that to desired flow. We generate an error <coughs> signal, send that to a controller, and then that changes the position of the valve. And then we have an outer controller that measures the composition of that stream, compares it to a set point, generates an error signal, and then another controller that determines the set point for the flow controller. And I, at this point, I've just given generic names for these things, right? That, that's the... Um, transfer function between composition and flow, that's the valve, that's the, that's the flow controller, that's the composition controller, okay? So there's, there's, shouldn't be a big leap to go from here to here. This ends up being, I mean, this is essentially out of the book. All I didn't draw was the disturbances of the measurement devices, but um, this will make your life a lot easier, at least a little bit easier in terms of designing the controllers. Okay, so let me see what the first problem was. I have to go back. I don't remember. Sorry. All right. So it says, assume that the transfer function between the position of the valve and the, fl and the flow looks like this. It's first order. Then please design a controller for me. It's direct synthesis controller. Um, I want the closed loop transfer function to be, you know, 1 over tau s plus 1, where tau c, I should say, is 1 half. And then... Um, this will end up giving you a PI controller, giving the PI controller parameters for it. Okay? Five points. In other words, easy. So let's see how we do that. Actually, um, let me do the following. I'm going to go through this quickly so I can talk about the, the last part, because the last part is multivariable, and you haven't seen that as much. So this, design a direct synthesis controller. Wow, that's new. Um, how do we do that? Well, I don't even know why I can. Here's the design equation. Again, it's rewritten. Uh, it was rewritten on, it was written earlier in the solution. GC2 will be one over G2, one over tau C2S, okay? It's just the design equation if the desired closed loop transfer function is first order. It's in the book, it's in the notes, it's previously written in the exam. Okay, you just plug into it. You plug into it, you'll get something that looks like this, and it's easy from there to get PI controller parameters. Okay? You can look at it. It's not, it's not new, and it's not exciting. Okay? The interesting part here could be the following. Now I say, design this outer controller. Okay? I'm telling you, please design the controller this guy, right here, which you can't see, probably. Okay, please design this controller right here. Okay. And to do this, I've made the following realization. You remember when we applied, we have this cascade control diagram. You remember that formula, what is it? Pi, you know, you can find the transfer function between any points by computing pi f over 1 plus pi e, and we applied that to the cascade control system two times, one to get rid of the inner loop, and then one to get rid of the outer loop, and then we found these transfer functions. If you go there, you'll see that you can replace this entire inner loop with um, gd2, because I've designed the controller such that that's the dynamics of the inner loop, so the inner loop can be represented just by that desired transfer function that I gave you in the first part, and now the diagram that you've, now that you've designed the inner controller, the diagram looks like that. 
Okay? This is a part where if someone said, where are people going to lose points on this exam? I'd say, this might be one. Because they might not, they might not realize that. If, if, if they said, if you asked me, are they going to lose points on part B? I'd be like, I'm afraid they might, but they shouldn't. Okay? But this, this right, requires a little thinking. You know, how, you know, how do I go about simplifying this? Okay, but once you make that realization, then it's pretty straightforward. You find the closed loop transfer function, which again is in the notes, um, between the output and the set point, right? It's all those three multiplied together, one plus those three multiplied together. You want this to have some dynamics because you're doing direct synthesis, so you assign it to be GD1. Then you solve this equation for GC1, which appears there and there, and you get this equation, which is exactly the equation in the notes, I think. Okay. Um, then you plug your stuff in. Plug your stuff in means you plug in all these transfer functions. The two desired transfer functions I gave you and then the G1 which I gave you. And it, you know the tau C1 here. You plug all that stuff in, you get this. Something that looks like this. You can already see, at least I can, this is, a, this is going to be a PID controller. Because the numerator is second order in S and the denominator is just a constant times S. Okay, so I already know it's PID. So I'm just going to rearrange it so I can figure out, so it looks exactly like this, so I can figure out the KC, the tau D, and the tau I. Um, and that's, I've rearranged it like this. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, I, let's just put it this way. If I give you this equation and I tell you it's equal to this equation, you could figure out what the KC, tau I, and tau D, right, from here. Okay, and if you do, you get these numbers here. All right. So we've got like five minutes left. So again, if, if I look at a typical exam, at least what I'd like to put together an exam, my argument would be 75 to 80% of the points are easy money, right? Now that isn't always the case because you're not as advanced as me, right? <laughs> Actually, okay, let me make an admission. For me, it's all easy money, right? You know, I've taught this course 20 <laughs> times. So if I don't know the material by now, I'm a real moron. Okay, um, but there's supposed to be like 15, 20 points that require some thinking. Um, if you get to a place where, you know, you realize you're not going to get it all done, just try to do as much as you can, okay? So it's, it's not intended to be an exam where people get 100, obviously, but I've tried to give you guys exams where at least people aren't giving, I have to admit, one time I gave an exam, the average was a 35, okay? People did not like me after that, okay? That had no effect on me, obviously. But, um, so my hope on an exam, like the final exam, is the average will be about a, a 70 to 75. That, that's the hope, okay? So most of that's going to be pretty easy points. Some's going to require a little bit of thinking, but it's not meant to be challenge, overly challenging. This exam, as you can tell, is long, right? And I tell you, your, yours will be about three, my goal will be to make it about three quarters this length, so not as long. Okay, with that diatribe out of the way, we've got, let me just tell you what the last problem was. I lied. I'm not going to do it. Okay, so I say, now we've got, I'm not going to show you the picture, but there's, there's a subset of the picture at the very beginning that's a little two-by-two two system that involves plant production rate and the composition and the reflux drum. That's the, um, I think that's recycle drum, sorry. That's the, well, they're the same thing. <laughs> um, that's being recycled back to the reactor. So those are two things I want to control, and I'm going to control those with the flow rate of A and B. If you don't know, I'm telling you that. Okay, and, and then the first thing I'm telling you is for those two outputs and those two inputs, this is the gain matrix. So I want you to do RGA on this, and then I want you to check whether the two possible, there's two pairings, possible pairings. I want you to determine if they're both stable or not, for reasons you'll see that's clear. And then at the end I ask you if, the, if this is what the actual transfer functions look like, right? How did I get that gain matrix? I set S equal to zero here and got that gain matrix from here. But then at the end, I give you the actual transfer function matrix. And then I ask you, and the reasoning is you, you're not going to determine a reason here to pair, and you're not going to be able to find a way here to pair. So I'm, I'm going to actually ask you at the end to figure out it with dynamics. So I'll just go over in like one minute the, what the solution looks like, and then you can look at the details. All right, so hopefully at this point, if I give you a gain matrix, which looks like this, you can calculate the RGA, right? It just can s consists of calculating the lambda, which is a combination of all these Ks. 
And once you have the lambda, you can fill in the rest of the uh, matrix, right? This lambda is 0.5. That's not good, right? Because that means they're all 0.5, right? Because every row and column has to sum to 1. So if someone says, how should I pair things based on the RGA? You'd say, which number is closest to 1? You'd say, they're all the same. They're all 0.5. <laughs> so in other words, this gives you no basis at all to pair. You, you follow me? It doesn't give you any basis whatsoever to pair the variables. So you're like, well, that's disappointing. Or may, you might say something worse. But then, then I say, okay, well, you know, one, one possibility would be that one of these pairings is stable and the other pairing is unstable. That would give you a basis, even though the RGA looks like that. So then I ask you to calculate this Nieder-Linsky index, right? You, you might recall that consists of calculating this quantity here, the, the determinant of the matrix, the gain matrix multiply in the denominator the diagonal elements of the matrix. So for the 1, 1 pairing, you do this on k directly. That's the determinant of k. That's the multiply the diagonal elements. It's equal to 2. I can tell you, 2 is greater than 0. And that means this is stable because for a two-dimensional system, it's a sufficient condition I covered that. But anyway, this will work, okay? At a minimum, it, you don't know it won't work. But for this, since it's 2 by 2, you know it will work. And then I told you, that if you want to do the other pairing, you have to make sure the elements are on the diagonal, right? So when you take the, gain, the original gain matrix and you want to look at the other pairing, 1, 2, 2, 1, you have to rearrange the gain matrix to do that. I did that on the board. It's written in the notes. So I'm not sure what I did here. I either swapped columns or rows. Let me see. 2, 2. Looks like I swapped the two columns, right? So I took these two columns and switched them. That way, these two elements were on the diagonal. That's what I need to test the other pairing. Um, if you do that, you get what I call the matrix called K prime, I think. And then if you do the same test with K prime, you get the exact same answer. It's also stable, so you have no basis for here either. It's like failure, failure, okay? So finally, I give you these transfer functions, and I ask you, based on this, what would you do? So what you're doing now is you're saying, obviously, st the first part, which has to do with steady state information, there's no difference between the possible pairings. In terms of stability, there's no difference between the pairings. So now I'm asking you, look at these transfer functions and tell me what you think the pairing should be based on those, okay? This was also covered um, in the lecture and it's in the book as well. So the first thing, you, so if you want to pair variables, what do you want? Small time constants and small time delays. That makes better control, right? Because time delays are bad, hopefully you learn, and if you have small time constants, you can tune the controller to be faster. So you want small time constants, small delays. If we look at time constants, we see 10, 10, 10, all the same, but this one's 5, that, so that's better than 10. So I'm, I'm eyeballing this guy, okay? And then I look at time delays and I see 4, 4, and 2. Well, 2 is also better. So I'm thinking I should really use that one for control, because that's the best of all of them, okay? And if I use that one, then I have to use this one, right? There's only one left. So I want to I pair U1 and Y2 because of this. And the only thing left over is to do, um, so yeah, this is U1. No, this is actually U2, Y1, and this one is the other one, which I can't say because I'm too tired. Okay. So, right, so the key here is to realize the time delay and time constant of this one transfer function is less than all the others, and you'd really want to do control based on that one. So that's, that's the only basis you have to do the pairing, and that's what I wrote down here. Okay? All right, well, that was a whirlwind tour of the exam. All right, so again, um, if you want to study, which I suggest you do, um, <laughs> then just work the old exams. If you have any questions, you can... Um, you know, send me an email or I can arrange to talk to you or whatever you might need. All right?